When it comes to blood pressure, some say that the systolic, or the number on the top in the reading, is the most important, and others say the diastolic, or the lower number, is the more important. And a huge British study shows that raised systolic and diastolic blood pressures may have different effects on different types of cardiovascular diseases and at different ages. So let's maybe first start with defining what systolic and diastolic are. Right, and pointing out that both blood pressures make a difference. The way you generate blood pressure is the heart contracts, and when it does, it sends a pulse of blood through the vascular system so that we can provide oxygen and nutrients to the cells. That pulse has a high number and a low number. The high number is called systolic, and the, and the low number is called diastolic. And normally, it should be under 140 on the top and 80 on the bottom. So there's always a pressure inside the vascular tree that's generated by this pulse that travels along the whole vascular system to our tissues. And that's what these numbers are about. Actually, the most important number of the two numbers is, a, is, is neither the systolic nor the diastolic. It's the difference between the two, and it forms something called a pulse pressure. So that if you have a blood pressure of 120 over 80, your pulse pressure would be the difference between the two. It would be 40. If you had a blood pressure of 160 over 80, it would be twice as much. It would be a matter of, of 80. And that higher pressure causes problems and different kinds of problems depending on which number you look at. Okay, so let's talk about the problems that you would have with the high systolic. Yeah, with the systolic pressure, the top number, the higher that number is, the more stress you put on the, the integrity of the blood vessel wall. And if the pressure gets real high, you could see that it gets high enough, it'll burst it. It's like a balloon. You inflate that balloon too much, and it pops, and that causes what's known as a hemorrhage. And that can occur in different ways in the brain or in other tissues of the body. And what about angina? Angina is something that can form in two ways as well. You can have high blood pressure for a long period of time, and that can cause an increase in uh, angina. And generally, we find that the systolic is a little bit more important in causing that. Okay, now, so where would it fit in to get a blood clot type of a stroke in your brain? Because we talked about yeah. the hemorrhagic. What about a blood clot? Well, blood clots are, are caused by about 85% of the time disease in the carotid arteries. So those arteries here that go from the aorta up to the brain. And what happens in high blood pressure is that a plaque seems to form, an arteriosclerotic plaque, something out of cholesterol. And when it gets inflamed, it begins to grow and it can attract clot. And if that clot gets big enough, it can break off and, and move to the, different, to, the, to the brain where it can cause loss of function because if it plugs up an artery, blood can no longer deliver oxygen and nutrients to the tissues. Okay, so now what if a person has high diastolic? What can that lead to? That more often leads to things like an abdominal aortic aneurysm. For some reason, when the pressure is sustained high for a longer period of time, it seems to weaken the, the artery, the main artery that goes from the heart out to the rest of the circulation. It's called the aorta. And that can be in either the thoracic or in the abdominal part of the aorta uh, generally. And that is associated with blood pressure that has more of a high bottom number. And it, it's just something that we've observed. So how can also a high diastolic increase your risk of getting kidney failure? Well, if, the, if your blood pressure was high for a long period of time and sustained high, we've found by observation that you'll have problems in the kidneys because it causes arteriosclerosis there and that causes kidney insufficiency. It can actually lead to kidney failure. Okay, so a person might say, well, how do we prevent this? And it would be like to lower the blood pressure, but uh -huh. many times to prevent these effects from a high blood pressure, mm -hmm. people are taking things like aspirin. Well, they're, tr they're trying to protect against the coagulation part of what happens. Once you have a blockage, it's a partial blockage. So if you have a, a plaque that's made out of cholesterol that's going to the heart, say, and it's blocking 80 or 85 or 90 percent of that blood vessel wall, when that blood vessel wall it becomes irritated and it becomes sticky, 
then platelets can stick to it, and if it and if it progresses far enough, it can obstruct the lumen of the of the wall, and it can cause a heart attack. In fact, that's the most common way we get a heart attack. But then there are some people that the doctors end up putting them on Coumadin or other types of blood thinners. Well, anticoagulants in general are something that doctors use in that setting, trying to prevent the progression of the clot. And it's one way of doing it. And if it's far advanced enough, it's what we should do. But I, in general, I think that there are ways that we can prevent these things from happening in the first place, and they're related to lifestyle. This lifestyle is our most important medicine. We say it in almost every delivery that we make uh, on this show. That's right. And, it, and if you eat right, you reduce your stress, you sleep right, you get enough exercise, you weigh what you should, you're not a, 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 a exposed to uh, environmental toxins, you find joy in your life, you're not going to get problems like hypertension. But if a person does have a problem where they want to prevent it, maybe some other healthy options than you mean the aspirin, a way to treat it to take, take, yeah, a better way to, to take, treat it yeah well now you're looking at using drugs or uh things like that or fish oil fish oil would be a good way to prevent the anticoagulation yeah that's okay. what i was talking about okay it will do that but to prevent the blood pressure itself from coming is a different story then you've got to go back to the lifestyle approaches or find some of the reasons why people get uh, hypertension such as having uh, problems with uh, stenosis of the arteries that lead to the kidneys or of having a problem with your parathyroid gland, or having a, a tumor in your kidney, or if you smoke too much. Or, I mean, there are a lot of causes for hypertension. And also, if a person gets hypertension at a younger age, like, say, 30, that mm -hmm. could be more serious. Yeah, well, these were studies that were done in the journal Lancet, published in the year 2014, uh, that showed in a study of people that these, these were people who would have problems much sooner. At about five years, uh, about five years sooner, if they had a problem with hypertension. So we're looking at a problem here where the risk is probably about 50% higher uh, if you, of getting any of these cardiovascular complications we've talked about uh, if you have hypertension. So let's talk about when and how you would treat low blood pressure then. Low blood pressure uh, really is something that comes from overtreatment or some unusual disease like uh, uh, adrenal uh, insufficiency, uh, or if you're dehydrated, things of that sort. And normally what I recommend to my patients is hydration, taking more salt than usual, but you've got to be careful in people who have certain conditions. So everybody's a little bit different, Vicki, and you have to treat on the basis of individuality, and that's what we do when we manage hypertension. Way too many doctors <clears throat> are just uh, cavalierly starting treatment on people and not following some of the problems they get into. And we'll talk about that another time. There's some drugs that we use every day that are real problems uh, in managing hypertension because they have side effects that we don't really pay much attention to. So when it comes to blood pressure, yes, the systolic tends to cause certain problems in the diastolic others, but the bottom line to take home here is that blood pressure needs to be controlled, and everybody's different. So we should do different things to try and maintain blood pressures that are more normal so we don't have the complications.